Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Real Life Riddells. Uh, you are seeing a quick 60 second recap of part three of our series on renovating the horse barn. Uh, last time we started doing some of the shiplap, we got uh, the entire room prepped uh, for spray foam insulation. Um, uh, Carthage High School, the Bulldogs went to their seventh state championship victory. Um, and we obviously celebrated Christmas as well. Uh, we started getting the windows put into this horse barn office um, and uh, started staining and pollying and staining and pollying. Um, so in today's episode, we're going to do a lot of putting that shiplap up on the walls and the ceiling. Uh, we'll get the floor put in um, and we'll finish putting all the windows in. So here we go. Um, <clears throat> didn't get anything done in here yesterday. Um, started to get ready to come up here and work and my wife was pointing at all the Christmas presents and the wrapping paper and everything all over the living room. She said, you are not leaving me with all this. So we spent the day just straightening the house and hanging out with kids and playing. So it was, it was good. So now, um, there is so much dust in here. So that's all just what I swept out from that bathroom area. And I did it using a little hand brush because just a regular broom just moves the big stuff, but it leaves so much dirt in the grooves in this concrete. So that'll be fun. We'll start doing these bigger walls. Uh, probably start with this one because we can go all the way up. Somebody's here. And that way I can get back to staining uh, out in the breezeway, so lots to do. Okay, so it is 7 p.m. Had quite a productive day. So the owner and his wife came up here and they were headed out to dinner with some friends and so they came by and the wife was like, is it too late to build my office? So the, the owner has been talking about his wife who does all the books and everything, payroll. Um, that side over there is what he was gonna reserve for her but she kept saying, oh, I'll just work out of the house. I'll just work out of the house. And then she finally saw what this is starting to look like. And so she's kind of warmed up to the idea of having an office up here. So anyway, we kind of hoped that would happen. So I told her when she said that, I said, you have no idea how long he's been waiting to hear those words. Here's the fun part about building in a horse barn. So we figured out, we figured out earlier in the week when we started framing for the windows um, that the whole concrete slab kind of slopes to the middle of the building. And so the windows, it's hard to tell. The windows are actually level. The openings that the windows are in are not level. They slope down this way. There's a half inch difference between that corner and that corner. So uh, this is a half inch lower. Um, so what we're having to do to mask that, this <laughs> is the joy of making things work we're basically going to bring this windowsill flush so it's going to be a sloped board uh, we're going to bring that flush we're actually going to have a shelf on here anyway uh, and then the same thing here we will trim this board we'll run it through the table saw at an angle um, and basically cut that as a slope board so that it becomes flush and level um, and then we'll trim the whole window out so what that means is eventually you will not see the frame here. It was a sea glass and it'll be trimmed around it. So, uh, we knew stuff like that was going to happen. Uh, so anyway, uh, you know, little things like that we expected to run into because it's, it was a stick built barn that they threw metal on. So weird. It's so echoey right here and so quiet right here. 
which is exactly what he wanted for his office. He wanted it to be as soundproof as possible. So anyway, got a lot done today. Looking really good. Uh, I'm kind of capping it off at this eight foot point. I didn't want to go any higher because I knew I had to plane those boards, but basically we'll go to that eight foot level and then we'll bring in the scaffolding and go the rest of the way up. It's going to be really fun when we get up there. Still got lots of boards to stain and poly, but it's getting cool. Especially when you start looking at it at that angle. Woo! I'm guessing somebody's here because I keep hearing strange banging noises outside. So, uh, ran that planer over this. I mean, it's not beautiful by any means. Of course, it's on the wall and there's obstacles in the way, but it's all shaved flush. So, shouldn't give me any issues whatsoever now. Beautiful. I mean, it's ugly, but it's beautiful. It is Monday, January 6th, uh, about 8.30 in the morning. Um, this is our first week of getting back to pseudo normal. So Janet started back to work today, teachers, uh, and then the kids go back to school Wednesday. So just dropped the big kids off at the grandparents' house. Uh, little one had already spent the night there last night. Um, so anyway, they're gonna be there all day. Um, I've got a very long, very must be productive day. Um, so the electrician is coming tomorrow. He was supposed to come Friday. He did come out, um, but he didn't put any outlets or anything in. He basically just hung two plates on the wall for uh, the owners to decide what color the switch plates they wanted. Um, but I guess it kind of makes sense. He's got to come back Tuesday tomorrow to do a new service line. They're running a new line from the the um, from the market road uh, to the horse barn because it doesn't have any, it doesn't have a 220. It doesn't have enough uh, power to run anything. The HVAC, uh, I think it does have enough to run the little tankless water heater, uh, but basically all that was run into this 
uh, building was just a little 110, just enough to run some plugs and some lights. Um, so not really enough for what they need uh, now that we've uh, renovated it. So anyway, so they're gonna run a new service line, put a new um, service box on it, the amp, uh, 200 amp service. I don't know, they may be doing a 400. I, I, haven't, I wasn't in on that conversation. Um, so anyway, uh, so that's all gonna happen tomorrow. So today I've gotta get everything I can done uh, because I gotta be out of their way. Um, my goal today is to get on that breezeway wall, the inside of it above those windows, take that all the way up 15 feet uh, and then above the loft, I've gotta get that uh, shiplap put in on that vertical wall. What other kind of wall is there? Um, Anyway. My hope is to get all of the shiplap done today so that once they turn on that HVAC and start conditioning the room, uh, that starts the countdown on our flooring. Because with flooring, you want it to sit for anywhere from, depending on the manufacturer, they say 36 to 72 hours. Uh, for this, it's a relatively well-conditioned space because of all the spray foam. It's been in there for two weeks. Um, so it's not like it's been outside and going through insane temperature fluctuations. So it's relatively conditioned. Uh, so we're just gonna do 36 hours, basically a uh, day and a half uh, once that's turned on. Okay, so like I said, we finished the closet yesterday. That's all my stuff in there, by the way. I built this thing and I am seriously jealous of how much storage space there is in here. Let me turn the camera around and I'll show you. So I've got another five gallon bucket back in the corner that's got uh, three foot levels and straight edges and things like that in it. Two portable tool chest there, a little uh, craftsman bucket, which is basically a five gallon bucket. I think it's actually like three, but no, that's five. That right there, if you've not seen this, it's not Costco, it's Costco, C-O-S-C-O. -C -O. That is a 14 foot telescoping ladder, holds up to 300 pounds. It's insane. I've already used it several times. It fits in the trunk of a car or the back seat. It's got some weight to it. I mean, it's not too heavy but very easy to carry, telescoping collapses. You can pull up to a customer's house and they'll say, oh, well, you didn't even bother bringing a ladder. Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> anyway, look at all that. And that's a lot of weight on those shelves. All those buckets are full. All my drill bit, blades, everything. Painting, sundries, there's all the pneumatic nails. These things are woven, I had one in here, it's not in here anymore. Woven canvas bags, epic. And then there's all my work lights and the fan. Tiny, tiny little closet. I think it is three by five, but look at all that storage. And plenty of room for me to stand inside it. I just gotta put a door on it.
Okay, it's Monday, January 13th, about 7.30 in the morning. So this door, hmm. So in trying to uh, refurbish this, this is such a complicated thing. Okay, so these are the old doors, obviously no window. Putting the window in the new one added about a half inch more than would fit to allow it to slide here. Um, we had measured everything and we expected it to fit perfectly, which it kind of does until you get to these bars. And all the screws that stick out stop this door from sliding. So right now we have to swing it out a little bit to be able to clear that. So what I'm gonna end up having to do is cut this bar right there, add another bracket, and bring this whole bar out. Uh, we'll probably put a one by behind it, um, just to give us the space that we need for clearance to get past that. And then we're gonna have to frame out the exterior of this opening to close that air gap again. It's all kinds of fun. Okay, so it is almost seven o'clock on Tuesday, January 14th. So, whew, got all the flooring done today. Now, you, you'll see it in the time lapse in the photos, but I've got it covered up with a massive 12 by 15 canvas right now so that it doesn't get messed up. Uh, the owner went and bought sinks and toilets and faucets. Uh, we were gonna do whiskey barrel sinks with hammered copper sinks and it was gonna be so epic and he's been trying for three weeks uh, through the Facebook marketplace there's all these people who list whiskey barrels for like a hundred hundred and twenty five dollars each and he's been trying like mad to buy them and nobody would respond to him and then finally today he uh, he and his wife reached out to somebody uh, who was in Denton I believe um, over by Dallas and he had them listed as $100, and then he said, well, I'm actually out of those, but I've got these nicer ones that are $125 each. And then I think it broke down when they were trying to work out meeting somewhere so that he didn't have to drive all the way to, to Denton to pick up these two barrels. So anyway, he went to Lowe's to get toilets, and while he was there, he saw some pedestal sinks that were on clearance. So, hmm. you know, I was really looking forward to doing the whiskey barrels, but it's all right. It'll still be gorgeous. They're Kohler sinks and Kohler pedestals, so um, it'll be very nice. So, uh, still got a little bit. I got tired of fighting these boards up there because it's such a weird, I mean, it was a horse barn. What do you expect? 
So we knew there were going to be issues where things weren't quite square and we'd have to kind of fudge things a little bit. So still got just a little bit left on this, uh, let's see, east, north. <laughs> I know my directions. On this north wall and then the ceiling. Um, but we're so close to being done with that. The floor is down uh, in the closet in the bathroom in here. Uh, tomorrow when I get here, I'm going to finish setting up the toilet. And like you saw at the beginning of the day, we did um, some concrete patching. We will go ahead and do the concrete work in there. Uh, tonight, I went ahead and built the wall here. Now, that's all original two by sixes. Problem is, in putting all these two by sixes up here, they fudged on their wall, this original one, because that's a two by six that got run through a table saw. So it's more like a four and a half or five instead of a five and a half, which is what a two by six actually is. So it threw off all my lines. What do you do? So uh, the good thing is most of the time there's going to be a door and the hardware and the track and all that stuff is going to be right here because the door is larger than the opening. Um, so I can, I can hide that. So uh, if you saw in the time lapse, we filled this with styrofoam insulation. We just basically tripled it and quadrupled it. And, uh, this is all new two by sixes inside here. So these will be stained as close as we can to this. Um, Busted out the concrete. I've just got to dig that hole because originally the toilet was going to be over here. Now it's going to be on that wall. So I've got to extend that pipe and put the toilet flames and everything right there. So, and then they ordered the water heater today, but it's not going to be here for another six days. So even though everything will be plumbed and hooked up, there won't be the water connection because of that water heater for another six days. Cause I don't, I guess I could put a valve on it and bypass hot water, but I don't know. We'll cross that bridge when we get here. So interesting thing about all of this, and the door is a prime example. This whole project, the owner and I, and one of his employees and I were talking about this as well, that it's just one problem after another. And that if you sat and listed all the problems and the challenges, it would overwhelm you and you would never try it. You'd just quit. Um, I'm a hopeless optimistic, and so uh, I take the uh, approach of one step at a time. And so with every challenge we've run into, it's just been tackle one problem at a time. Don't worry about the big picture, just work on this one little thing. And if it gets too daunting and you get frustrated uh, and you keep running into walls with that one problem, switch to a different problem work on it and the way my brain works it often will it just it keeps mulling over the first problem until it comes up with a solution so yeah fresh perspective all that so my wife is texting me it is dark outside as you can see it's it's time to go home but we are so stinking close with this mm.